This is topic 18, the difference quotient, definition of a derivative at x is equal to c. So if you have, and by the way, on this one, c is a constant. So if I'm trying to figure out the slope of this line, all right, the slope of the secant line, remember the secant line means you're touching two points on that curve. To figure that out, that's just the change in y, change in y over the change in x. Okay, now if we're going to use this coordinates though that I have here, right? Notice that this point right here, this is C, F of C, and this point on the right, we're going to label it as X, F of X, all right? So the change in Y would be F of X minus F of C over X minus C, and this will find the slope of the secant line. Right, on the other hand, if I'm trying to figure out the slope, right, the slope of the tangent line at C, we're going to take a derivative. All right? So the meaning of derivative is instantaneous rate of change of f of x with respect to x at x is equal to C. So we're going to use this notation from now on. This is the notation for a derivative. So this is the notation for the derivative at C. And remember, don't forget that all the derivative is, it may sound really complicated, but all it is, that's the slope of the tangent line. Add x is equal to c. All right, so I'm going to show you the formula for that. So the formula for the derivative, or to find the slope of the tangent line at c, would be equal to the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. And please notice that this formula and the formula for the slope of the secant line are almost the same. All right? The only difference is you have a limit here. Well, if you think about it, right, as x approaches c, so as x gets closer and closer to c, all right? so as x gets closer and closer to c, Notice that if I'm looking for the slope between two points, but if I make those two points ever so close to one another, then you're actually going to find the slope of the tangent line, which would be something that looks like that. All right, so if I bring this point closer and closer to this, eventually it's almost going to be right on top. And when I'm right on top, that's going to be the slope of the tangent line, which is the derivative. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So again, this is called the derivative. All right, on the next part, we're going to go ahead and use this formula to solve a couple of problems. On example one, it says use the definition of a derivative to find the value of f prime of c when c is equal to 5 and f of x is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 18. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to try to figure out, first of all, it's asking us to find f of f prime of c, which literally, forget, forget what this, how complicated this, this may look. What we're actually looking for is for the slope of the tangent line on this function at x is equal to 5, or in this case, they call it c is equal to 5, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what my x and f of x is and what is my c and f of c. So I'm going to write that x and f of x is equal to x and f of x, all right, so that's going to stay the same. f of x is going to be what I have right here. So I have x squared minus 8x plus 18, all right, so that's going to be it for that. Now my c and f of c, right, that constant that's given to me, it's 5, all right, so that x value is going to be 5. And the y value, well, that's going to be f of 5. And in this, in this case, I'm going to have to find that. So to do this, I am going to have to plug in f of 5 in here. So I'm going to plug in a 5 for x. And when I do, right, when I plug in a 5 in this equation right here, I'm going to have that that's going to be equal to 3. All right, so I have a point. So there's a point on this one right here. There's a point on f of x, which is 5, 3. And that's where I'm going to try to find the slope of the tangent line. Okay. So now to find the slope, 
All right, so don't forget this means the slope at five or the derivative at five is equal to the limit as x approaches five. And I'm gonna use this formula, right? So don't be confused. So f of x is gonna be x squared minus eight x plus 18 minus, all right, that minus is coming from here. F of c in this case is gonna be three over x minus five, right? So notice that's x minus c, and c in this case is five. All right, so what we're gonna do from there on, uh, forget about the fact that it's a derivative. I will, if I were to ask you to find the limit, you first try to plug it in. Notice that it's gonna give you an indeterminate form. It's gonna give you a zero in the denominator. So therefore, I'm gonna have to at least try to factor. All right, so this is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches five of x squared minus eight x plus 15 over x minus five. So notice that at this point, all I've done really is add the like terms. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and factor that. It's equal to the limit as x approaches five of x minus five and x minus three over x minus five. Right, notice that this is gonna cancel and once I cancel that, then I am free to go ahead and plug in that limit. So if I plug in a five here, I'm gonna get a two. All right, so I'm gonna write this over here just to make it a little bit more clear that if you see this notation like this, this means that the slope of the tangent line at five is equal to two. All right, so this right here is the slope of the tangent line. All right, so the second part of this question says, write the equation of the tangent line. All right, so to write the equation of the tangent line, you probably remember this formula. You have y is equal to mx plus b, all right, where m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. In this case, we don't know what the y-intercept would be. So what we would have to do is plug in the point that we know. Notice that the point is right here. You have three, sorry, five and three and the slope is two, all right? So if I were to plug that in, I would have three is equal to the slope is two, the x coordinate is five plus b, and if I were to solve that, right, that's 10 right here, I subtract 10 from both sides, so it could be is equal to negative seven, all right? So I'm gonna make another line, sorry that you don't have a whole lot of space here, so this would be y is equal to two x minus seven. All right, but it turns out that the AP exam though, however, they kind of make it easier for you because you can use what's called the slope point, uh, the point slope formula. So I'm going to write the point slope formula for here. Now this one's not too bad to find the equation of the line, but eventually you're going to have some numbers that would be pretty uh, difficult or time consuming would be a better word. Time consuming to try to put in the in this type of y equals mx plus b form. So if you use the point slope formula, you have y minus y1 is equal to the slope x minus x1, where x, y1 and x1 are actually the point, they're a point on the graph. So that point right here is also 5, 3, all right? So this would be equal to y minus 3 is equal to 2x minus 5, okay? So in your AP exam, they don't even expect you to really um, simplify this further, you can actually leave it like that. Now, of course, if you have some multiple choice and they don't have any of this form, then you don't have to go further than this. So if I simplify this, I get that answer, right? But from now on, we're gonna use the point slope formula. Just real fast though, so you understand what's going on. All right, I'm gonna graph something for you. So if I put this original function here, which was x squared minus eight x plus 18, and on y2, I'm gonna put the equation of the line that I found here, 2x minus seven. And if I did it correctly, all right, this parabola that's about to appear, there's gonna be a tangent line right there. All right, right about, notice that, that was, that's about one, two, three, four, five, about that point. All right, so make sure, this is a good way to check your work. If it's crossing through two points or it's not even touching, at x is equal to five in this case, then you did something wrong. Okay, 
Moving on to the next one. Notice that on the next one, this would be a good test question. Write the equation of the tangent line at c is equal to 4. Now notice that it's not asking us to find, uh, to take the derivative. However, to write the equation of a line, I need two things. I need the slope, and I need a point on the graph. All right, notice that this is the x point. This would be the x coordinate. I don't have the y coordinate, but again, I need the slope to write the equation of the tangent line. So therefore, even though it didn't ask me explicitly, I'm going to have to find the slope at 4. All right, so again, same idea. I'm going to write x f of x. You don't have to write this necessarily if you feel comfortable with using this formula, but if you don't feel comfortable, it might make it easier for you and less confusing if you write what each term is. And this right here would be C F of C, which in our case would be 4 and F of 4. And it turns out that F of 4 is equal to 0. So there's my point. There's a point in the graph for 0. All right. So we're going to go ahead and find the slope at 4. All right, so notice that I want to have, according to the formula, you can barely see up here, f of x minus f of c. f of x is x squared. Oh, excuse me, I forgot to write the limit. So it's equal to the limit as x approaches 4 of x squared minus 3x minus 4 minus 0 over, so notice that I put a 0 here because that's f of c. c f of c is 0 x minus 4. Right, on this one, there's not a whole lot to do. I didn't really have to write the minus 0, but I want you to see why I only have this. All right, so at this point, I'm just going to factor this right here. So I would have x minus 4, x plus 1 over x minus 4. I forgot to write the limit here as x approaches 4, sorry. All right, so notice that this is going to cancel. So when I plug in that 4 into here, I get 5. All right, so one more time. The slope of the tangent line at 4 is equal to 5, all right? So again, there's a tangent line on this parabola there's a tangent line at 4, and that has a slope of 5. Right now, to find the equation of the line, again, we're going to use the point-slope formula here. So I'm not going to write it in this form anymore. I want to have y minus, uh, let's see, 0 is equal to 5, x minus the x-coordinate, which in this case is 4. All right, so you can get rid of that 0 if you want to. Right, I'm going to leave it like that, OK? All right, now let's go to, I'm going to go ahead and do topic 19, because it's very short. So this is the back of your homework. Remember, your homework is A1819. All right, so I'm going to do this one. So it's like the back of your homework. So we're going to try to find out some slopes on here, right? So to do that, what we're going to do here is we're going to, I'm going to pick a, a few points. I'm going to pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? So I'm going to pick those points. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to write it on here so you just don't forget. So what we're doing here is we're going to estimate, estimate the slope of the tangent lines. at these x values. And to be precise, the x values that I'm talking about are the x values that you see on the graph. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to put x. All right, notice that the values I picked are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, so I'm going to do my best to try to be on screen here. 
All right, but right here, instead of writing the y coordinate, I'm going to write the slopes of the tangent line. So don't forget that this is the slopes. Okay, so this would be the slopes of the tangent lines. All right, so, and remember, we're approximating, so some of your answer might be slightly different, but this should be, an, um, this should be a function that appears if you uh, plot this point, which we will on the back of this. All right, so let's see on this one right here. If I do that, oops. Make sure to cross through it. All right, notice that I could say that this is up three over one, so I'm gonna call the slope three. Run right on the next one. I'm gonna have, uh, it's kinda hard to tell on that one, but I'm gonna call this a one. All right, the one we should all agree with is this one. This one has a slope of zero. All right, the next one has a slope of negative one half. Notice that's about down a half or over two down one, right? Or down one over two. Wait. Yeah. So this is a slope of negative one half. Okay. So we're going down a half over one. That's what I meant to say. So again, that's the slope of negative one half. And notice that right here we should agree that this also has a slope of zero. The next one, well, let's see. I'm going to say that this is 1, whether you see how I'm doing that, right? And then finally, this one right here. OK, this one right here has a slope of 3. I'm going to approximate. And yes, I'm, hopefully you can see there's a pattern emerging. All right, so all of these are just the slopes of the tangent line. So all the pink lines are the slopes. I'm going to turn to the back of this, and I'm going to plot those points. All right, so I have, let's see, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, and negative 1 half, excuse me. Then I have 2, 0, 3, 1, and then 4, let's see, 4, 3. All right, so this looks like, like a parabola here. So again, don't forget that what I just graphed basically is the derivative. Okay, and just something you're gonna learn later on is that if, now I guess this is good because I have a separate piece of paper and you don't, but if this is the graph, if this is the graph of the original, if you will, then the graph of the derivative should be one degree less. Notice that this is a positive cubic degree 3, so my derivative should be a positive degree 2, and it is. So when you're doing your homework, always think about that. If you have a cubic and it's positive, then the graph of your derivative should be a quadratic degree 2, one degree less, and positive also. All right, so don't forget that on the best way for you to check your homework is to figure out, okay, what is the degree of the original function that I have? So the graph of the derivative should have one degree less, and if the graph of the original is positive, then the graph of the derivative should also be positive, okay? If you got any questions, let me know. We'll see you next time.